Morning and welcome to another training video. Today we're going to go over how to write a contract to lease using form simplicity and your MLS. Using this method will allow you to write a quick contract that will be able to be used all the time by yourself, your team member, and easy for your clients to, to read. We here use form simplicity to make it a lot easier to send e-signed documentations to your clients. Now, the steps that I'm giving you to write the contracts will be the same no matter which company you're using and which type of contract you're writing. Dot loop, uh, sky slope, whichever contract form that you want to that you want to use personally will be the same steps as long as you're writing a proper contract as in the state of Florida requires. So first you want to start off by putting in your, your street address, whatever address that you're using for that contract has to be written. So in this case, I'm using 123 Main Street. With 123 Main Street, it allows me to go about finding exactly, so I know exactly what transaction I'm doing and what I'm looking into. Um, I will go ahead and put the transaction name as same as address, property type select as residential, or if you're doing commercial, farm ranch, or vacant land, it's, there's also different forms that you can use for these type. In transaction type, I will go ahead and put lease slash rental and I go ahead and create a new transaction now when creating a new transaction if you already have the MLS open you can go ahead and input the MLS number of that transaction right here so that you can go ahead and import all the information if you do not have it you'll go ahead and do that manually so you can store the data for later so I'll say that I'm renting for one thousand two hundred forty thirty four dollars that's the list price and we're offered exact list price again boom now you will select the add blank forms if you're if you have form packages pre-selected or pre-created for yourself you can go ahead and select the second one and it'll help you go through these faster i do recommend making your pre um, pre-filled packages so that you know where to go to next time so whatever contracts you types of contracts you write in the future to try consistently create form packages that will allow you to get through the steps a lot faster you want to select all libraries and i like to use a search form instead of going through the list i'll type in contract to lease hit search this will be the first one there is a slight difference between a contract to lease and a lease agreement a contract to lease is your offer to the landlord for their property so this is pre-lease agreement there's two different things do not get them confused because they sometimes get, they go hand in hand the top line is always going to be the name of the landlord so mr landlord the bottom line will be tenant, Mrs. or and Mr. Tenant. You typically you want to put the lease agreement for the beginning of the month or the following month, so that it makes it easier on the accounting and money money um, money management for this. So I put for the first of November, not October, twenty twenty two. The landlord should always be the one creating that contract. Uh, you're not the contract but the agree the lease agreement as the agent in this case in the contract to lease you always you only want to propose what your client is willing to pay for boom so deposit just like any other transaction you always have an escrow deposit now some brokerages do hold escrow deposits some don't i do we do not hold escrow deposits here um, what you'll do you'll still put the deposit amount so in this case will be one, two, th three, four, to landlord agent, meaning that you're going to give that check to a landlord agent. You're not going to hold it yourself. The property address is one, two, three, Main Street, Miami, Florida. It'll be an unfurnished apartment, and the property will only be lease to Mr. and Mrs. Tenant for the lease to begin November 1st, 2022. And you always go 
29 like a year and 29 days behind so if we started the lease november 1st 2022 we'll end the lease october 31st 2023 So now, the cool thing about form simplicity is that this portion right here fills in by itself. You don't have to do it twice. It just happens to do it for you. So you want to go ahead and put in what they'll be paying. So first month rent, one, two, three, four, will be due on, on um, November 1st, once you get the place, as well as secure deposit, the secure deposit, one, two, three, four, due November 1st. And you'll scroll back to the paragraph two, which refers to the deposit that you put in before. And you can put it towards whichever one you don't want. Usually I put it towards the last month's credit. One, two, three, four. And it's all listed. Now the tenant will pay will pay an addition to the deposit, $2,468 to move in. Rent and tax payment. So if you do your math, for the entire year, two, three, four times 12, the tenant will pay $14,808 in total rent. We do not pay taxes on rent here in Florida unless you're doing a commercial lease monthly on the first day of the month in the amount of one, two, three, four. Pets, I always put pets permitted as described. Pet deposit applies. Smoking is prohibited at all times. Uh, usually these change um, depending on the situation. Some, ten some landlords do not have their tenants pay waste or water and sewer. Others have the whole thing included. So waste, water and sewer. The landlord will be responsible. I always put any items that need to be repaired over $200 and sorry, under $200. So the tenant will be responsible for any items that, that need to be repaired that cost less than $200 and the landlord will be responsible for anything else that costs more than $200. So if your fridge, washing machine, dryers, AC, all the proper maintenance for the property. But if it's something small like AC filter, a small leak or something like that, the, t the tenant can go ahead and take care of that. Um, if there's an associ association approval, usually the tenant will pay the fee that it, that is asked. So I us it's usually around $100. And that approval date must be done before the 1st of November, so before they move in. If there's any additional terms that you'd like to provide, as in like, you know, would like to repaint, remodel a few things, you'll put that there. But you have to make sure that the landlord has this reviewed by an attorney. Because this additional term section here would be an amendment to the contract. Um, all the rest is just tells you that, you know, the, the landlord is allowed to do a background check, determines a credit or reference, do not determine. They have to do this before the the uh, the, the the lease agreement is signed. <clears throat> See, you have to declare for yourself if you're a veteran or service member. Uh, if the tenant fails to perform permits of the contract, the deposit paid by tenant may be retained by a landlord for the account of landlord has agreed upon liquidated damages compensation at this, in the execution of this contract in full settlement. So this only applies if the contract is accepted and you move on to a lease agreement. And the lease agreement, we'll go over it next, has a few parts that are more difficult, no more um, tedious, I'll say tedious, that you have to go through and read. Because if your client, for any reason, does not perform as to the contract, the landlord is entitled to keep the entire com the entire commission, the entire cost of the, de of the deposit. So if there's any damages, so if they move out early without giving notification, they're given rights to the landlord to keep that for themselves. So you'll go over this with them, put your name, last name of both agents here, um, prospective tenant, signs, if there's two of them, the address, current address, current telephone number and email um, for both prospective landlord. This will be signed by the other side. And 
that'll be it on this contract. Once you finish, you can go ahead and select e-sign. You put in your the party information. So in this case, I'll create a new session. So e-sign, create e-sign 2.0. And this will be where you put in all the information, who was a recipient, so who or who is who is signing, and you'll go ahead and send that over to them, and they'll do the e-sign and receive back a copy that you'll submit to the agent on the other side. Hopefully this helped, and this was how to write a contract to lease. My name is Darren Belzer. If you need me, you guys know where to find me and how to contact me. Um, have a wonderful day.